It seems to me that many children's books weren't actually written specifically with children in mind. So taking this audacious claim on board, I'm completely unashamed to admit that one of the most profound books I've ever read, and which I never tire of reading, is not from the pen of literary aristocrats such as Shakespeare, Hardy, Orwell, Austin, or Dickens. No, it is in fact Kenneth Graham's The Wind in the Willows. I've lost count of the number of times that I've preached on some aspect of his riverbank tale that traces the exploits of Ratty, Mole, the irrepressible Mr Toad and dear old Badger. I read it to both of our boys when they were children from a beautifully illustrated copy that's still on the bookshelf. And I invariably take my own copy with me when I travel down to London from time to time. At the heart of the story is the life of the river, which Ratty describes to Mole as always changing and always staying the same. And this watery idyll provided them all with the parameters of their identity, as well as their home. The notion of returning home is a regular theme in the Bible. In the Old Testament, we read of the Jewish exiles yearning for restitution to their homeland, far from their captivity in Babylon. In the Psalms, we read of the Jewish faithful lamenting and weeping by the river, unable to offer the Lord a new song in a strange land. And yet this period of exile was a time in which Judaism flourished and rediscovered its faith in Yahweh. In the absence of a temple that had been raised to the ground, ordinary life developed around the synagogue. And paradoxically, the exile that they experienced was the period in which most of the Old Testament was written, compiled or edited, and defined the general structure of Judaism for the centuries that followed. I wonder how we as Christians have grown in faith during our limited exile from St Anne's. In the New Testament, the religious idea of home is understood in somewhat more spiritual and less geographical terms. In the Gospel according to St John, Jesus said, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He also spoke of the Father's mansion, in which there are many rooms. Jesus alludes to this home as a place of welcome, a place of rest, a place where we, his church, belong. St Paul also uses this same metaphor when he writes to the church in Ephesus that Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and he will keep you strong. The rich culture of Christian hymnody articulates through the beauty of singing and music the theme of homecoming, drawing upon Jesus' parable of the prodigal son. And this has also been the inspiration for many Christian spiritual writers. In art, Rembrandt's well-known painting of the errant son returning to his father, that's currently lodged in the Hermitage in St Petersburg, influenced the Dutch priest and psychologist Henry Nuon as he crafted his classic work on Christian belonging. I wonder how we, as Christians, have made greater space for Jesus in our internal home in these recent weeks. Since it was consecrated by Bishop Cleaver in 1799, St Anne's, rather like Ratty's meandering river, has changed, and yet it has always stayed the same, providing a sense of home to countless faithful Christian people. There are also people that we know personally living in other parts of the country for whom this little church still remains home. In planning the reaccessing to our holy home this coming week, some of you who come along to say your private prayers will notice that certain alterations have taken place inside. 
furnishings here and there have been stored away, but you will see it remains recognisably home. The focus of our devotion in this spiritual powerhouse has not and will not change. For the sanctuary lamp above the ornery where I stand, where the reserved sacrament is housed, has never been extinguished and it continues to illuminate St Anne's and our parish throughout the silent hours. The constant presence of a candle within this sanctuary is a visible reminder of Jesus' presence with us always in our day-to-day -day activities and wherever we may be. It is with him, after all, that we discover where we are most at home. So then, keep the faith, and as you pray for me, I shall surely pray for you.